I played strictly CFMs last year. Right. And then this is this is my first like full year of playing actual mutt. Hey, what's going on, guys? What's up, man? Nothing too much. Nothing too much. So, um, I, you know, I finally made it in. <laughs> yeah, definitely. No, I was wondering. I don't know how you. Uh, what happened last week? But we were all in this channel, so I, I don't know if uh, you were like in the. I was in the wrong channel. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. And I and I was just like, you know what? They're not coming in here. So I'll jump on Fortnite. <laughs> no. Yeah. No, I'm sorry about that. Oh, you're good. I appreciate um, you coming through. Yeah, most definitely, most definitely. Same oh, here, man. Here. I appreciate this. Yeah. Appreciate this effort. For sure, for sure. No, I I definitely want to make this like a weekly thing. Uh, make sure you know I'm just engaging with everybody in the program on a weekly basis. I think it's important, you know, that we're all you know coming together weekly because the game is always changing and evolving. So. Right. Uh, I mean, even yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, even this past week, I mean, or they got the AP update coming with you know Escape Bars is going to be like. Nine eight nine AP. So again, the game is going to change so, again. You know. So the escape artist will not be as good. Is that what that means? It'll still be so, as good, but you're not going to be able to stack it with other abilities. Like yeah. you're not going to be able to have gunslinger and escape artist, or escape artist and like hot route master and stuff. Right. Yeah. I got you. I don't know how. Um, I'm a rigs guy right now, so I don't know how mutt works. <laughs> yeah, sure. But starting next year, I'm gonna I'm gonna dive in because I, I really want to try to compete with in MC. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, you know, months. And I, a lot of people laugh at me because I play with one hand. But oh well. I don't think anyone's laugh. There's no way anyone's laughing at you for that. That's awesome that you're doing that and you know been able to over, overcome that. So uh, yeah, you should be proud yeah. of yourself for that. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I'm. I'm an average at best Madden player with two hands. So, <laughs> hey man, we're gonna we're uh, gonna get you to great. I hate though. I hate when I walk in here and people just sound so down when it comes to Madden. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, we're gonna, I, we're I get, gonna get it. You. Like, a lot of times, like people say, "Oh, the game is so bad. The game is so bad." And I, I get it. Like the game can be bad and frustrating and everything like that. But I I enjoy it because of the community, the people that you meet, the things that you learn and. You get better, and then some Maddens, you know, it's your Madden, and you, you do really well. Some Maddens, you don't do as well. So, yeah. you just got to kind of take it as it is. Yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. Let me, um, let, me give you a little, let me give you a quick background about me, man. <laughs> you know, uh, I started, well, well, mine was like in October, maybe? Yeah. If I believe. Yeah, you were and, right here from the start. And and I was like, I was a, I was a casual, like, I wouldn't disrespect my Madden game, man, like, well, most of y'all, yeah, I play. I I enjoy Mutt because like fantasy football, so that's why I like Mutt versus Rags. So to keep below to keep a long story short, I was only getting like maybe like seven seven wins a game, seven wins on weekend league. Man, I'm getting almost eighteen wins. Oh wow, that's so, insane. So 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 it's like if you put you I mean if you if you it's like you get what you what you put in. It's like if you invest your money and and, and your time, I understand. Hey, if I got jobs and stuff, because I'm a full-time father, and 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 I and I, have, I try to play as much Madden as I can yeah. to 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 get better. So it's like if you invest your time and and put the and put the work in, the results gonna show. It's not gonna it's not gonna show in the first week or or the second day, but as you keep on, the more you play, I, obviously it's, it's like playing it's like playing any sport in real life. If you shoot like if you play basketball, after a while. You keep on shooting a thousand jump shots. You want you want to see you want to hit you're gonna you're gonna hit more than you miss. Yep. Yeah, definitely. No, especially so just, you, yeah. you get so what just you yes, yeah, yeah. So just take that into consideration because I got because after Mono beat me like set it was like forty two to seven. I didn't want I didn't want to play Madden no more. I wanted to go back to two K. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then I just I just I just stuck with it and now. <sighs> I'm a problem. I'm not to my own hand. Oh, the mark can tell you. Yeah. I'm like, I'm a, I'm a problem. Uh, you're definitely, you're definitely on the come up. You know, it's really hard to go from seven wins to eighteen wins on weekly league. That's like insane. That's insane, insane. I wouldn't even tell somebody that joined the program that I can't even promise them that. No, I'll say like, yeah. You know, I'll say like move up like five wins. 
uh, five seven wins. I think that's yeah, but yeah, I mean, it's it's um, you know, it's like it's there was it's like because I because. I'm a, I'm I'm a perfectionist, so it's like I'm I'm gonna keep on I'm gonna continue to put the work in. It's like, um, not everybody's gonna jump from five wins to eighteen wins. You might jump from five to ten wins or five to twelve or five to fifteen wins. It's it's all it's all about it's all about how much how much time you put how, how much time you put the work in and are you are you willing to what are you you willing to work on and. Yeah, this is what it will work, work, work on the stuff that you're not good at. Maybe it be your pocket presence or adjusting on defense or um, um, disguising coverages or look, uh, lear- learning what, what the base coverage is. What does a cover, what does a, a base cover two look like? Base cover three and man to man and cover four. It's like once you get, once you go, once you get those down pat. You're going. You're going. You're going to beat 75 percent of the Manic community. Yeah, most definitely. Because 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 every everybody don't know how everybody don't know how to hide their defense or make all their defense look the same. Definitely. No, and yeah, you you definitely have gotten the most out of this, and you've been putting a lot in as well. So you know you've gotten like crazy. Like that's a crazy like growth spurt. You know, in a in like a six month basis, that's actually really insane. Uh, and I know D, uh, D Live as well. Uh, D Live, you went from like ten to fourteen, right? Uh, last last time I played weekend, so I used to struggle. I used to be around eight to ten. Like mm-hmm. ten was like absolute sweat fest. To like, uh, not this past week, but the week before, I got sixteen. Oh my god! All right, maybe, maybe I'm under. Hey, maybe I'm under song. Okay, maybe. Okay, yeah, so yeah, that, that's you, pretty. You that's crazy. Selling yourself. You that's sell, crazy. You're selling your, yourself. Shut. It's like the yeah. program; it works. It's all about the person, how much time you want yeah. to put in, Definitely. put into, yeah. um, put into the game. Yeah, Definitely. exactly. Definitely. So, wow. like, like he, he just said, he just won. He last last time he played weekly, he won sixteen. Yeah, that's yeah, that's, and I've, that's awesome. And I mean, I'm every weekend league, I've gone from like like I said, like seven to ten wins and stuff like that, to like I'm winning fourteen, fifteen consistently. I can't remember the last time I didn't win at least 14 and each weekend league for the last five weekend leagues, I've played a pro. Like I played throne. I played skimbo. Oh, you I played, want Xbox. Okay. Yeah. I played uh civil. I played, you know, I've played some like legit pros that are, you know, like, I mean, I played civil live on his stream and he was like, this dude isn't that bad. He's making good reads and bad yeah. is kind of cheating him. And I just know a little bit more about it than he does. Yeah. Definitely. Now that's awesome to see yeah. your guys' growth. That's that's super cool. So, um, what do you guys think was the biggest difference, like, and skill wise, like, what what was the biggest thing you, you need to learn to get you to like have a, a super growth spurt like that? So mine was defensively. So offensively, I'm pretty decent. So I lab, I lab with spamming buttons a lot, and his trips offense is basically mm-hmm. what I run. And I just was struggling mightily with defense and understanding, okay, if I'm playing a toter, do what defense do I go to? If I'm playing someone who likes to run escape artists, what defense do I go to? So now I've kind of graduated into being a little bit, I'm in the 4-6 defensive playbook, and I've graduated into being able to run, you know, double Mabels and set up stuff quickly. So... That has been the biggest thing. Like until like two weeks ago, I didn't know you could do like coverage audibles and things like that with your D line and your O line with the left directional pad until like two weeks ago. Oh wow. So so now being able to make those changes without having to click over to each person, figure that out, it's just become more muscle memory and I can set up a complete double mabel out of three three five audibling down to wide in like five seconds. So it doesn't that's been my biggest learning curve and where I've seen the most improvement is like the defensive strategy that video that I watch. And then, um, even though I run spam and like offense, the, um, the, uh, route route combination video was the big one. And then probably the most unsung one was the time management clock management. Yeah. I at least, I at least get three more wins in weekend league because oh, yeah. Yeah. I get the ball back down three, down four, whatever, and then I milk the clock all the way down and literally score with like 15 seconds, 10 seconds left. And 
I mean, whereas I would have scored with like a minute left on the clock and then they would have come down and, you know, got a cheap play or something like that to score to beat me. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same way, man. I mean, even in regs, like, as long as I can manage manage the clock, I feel like I can win it. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'll say that's the number one skill right now, man. With the games mainly being high scoring, it's so important to – you know, not only score seven at the end of halves, but score seven and leave them little time to get the ball back. So that's one of the biggest keys right now. So, you know, that's what I was saying. That clock management course, uh, you know, for anybody that's having their subscription renew, that's probably something we really want to focus on because clock management is so important right now. And it's going to be so important every year. Yep. Yeah. But, yeah, that's awesome. Like, I, honestly, I didn't even start, like, the YouTube, like, the, well, I, I've had this recording, but I didn't even start with user. We start with, Hey, you know, so what was your experience like before the Man Academy and kind of where are you at now? What's the difference made? But, you know, I we already picked up on that, so that's awesome. Um, and uh, I know we had a few more come in. What's going on, Wint, Agent, Enforcer? What's going on through you guys? I see Mark in here. Yeah, Mark been quiet lately. He needs to stop talking. I know your hand broke, but you, your boy, look at your mouth, man. <laughs> hey. But, no, I'm, I'm glad to have you guys on again. You know, anybody... You know, while we're doing this coaching session, uh, you know, feel free to offer any input, ask any questions, or, you know, even give them any advice. Uh, so, again, it's supposed to be interactive, engaging, so everybody, I want everybody to be involved with it. All right, but yeah, you can you can get started, D-Live. All right. Marlon, you just watch him while he plays the game and give him like some coaching tips and stuff or whatnot. What's up? What's, yeah, how's that working? Yeah. yeah, so that's what we're gonna be doing. We're just gonna be. I'm just kind of walk him through some steps, you know, as, as he's playing the game, and you know, I guess maybe even pick at his thought process as well. Okay. And fire. You can, and you can ask uh, questions as well. Right on. Fire. Yeah. So D Live, kind of. I ain't gonna try to distract you, D Live, man. Do your thing. No, you're yeah. good. You're good. I stream, so yeah. if you guys, are, I'm I'm used to like seeing chat and stuff like that. So if y'all are asking questions or talking, it's fine. All right, right on, bro. Yeah, and I'm glad to have you in here, uh, Agent. Uh, make sure as well uh, to submit your film for the next one as well, because I do want to I do want to get started with you on that. Hey, what's going on, Brian? Sure. Yeah. So what's kind of your thought process here? You know. Opening up on uh, defense, uh, D Live. What do you? So use? just setting my audibles, getting everything to a point that I can um, find everything whenever I come out in my base defense. Yeah. And then um, you're not ever going to get with as much stuff as I do. I'm probably not ever going to get them all set up in one thing, especially if they pick their play quickly. Yeah. So I like setting my hooks at ten, curl flats to ten. Um, either 30 or 25, depending on if they're running. Um, live. I got a question for you, man. How so, often do you set up like your audibles and stuff? Lots of times time. when I'm playing online. If y'all can still hear me. Yeah, we can hear you. I think I lost one. Yeah, we can still hear you. Nope, I can hear you. Oh, I think we lost him. Yeah, and like I always tell people too, you know, you always want to start with your flats. I always start with my flats on 30 on those first drives because you want to, you want to play bend but don't break on defense because uh, for later in the game, you want to be able to recall, okay, this is the play that this guy ran in, you know, first and 10, or he ran this play on a big third down. So you want them to have, have as long of a drive as possible, whereas if they score in two plays, you're not going to know much for later in the game. I'll be honest, um, like Let's when go. I put my Let's Let's go. Go. Uh, when, when I put my uh, flats on thirty, like I get torched for some reason. Like and I know it's up underneath, like you won't how do you how are you able to double mabel it like without running three three five wide? Like the mic three or whatever? Yeah. Uh so um, Oh you can answer that, uh Greg if that was you who said that. Nah, I mean I was going to answer it, but um, I mean if somebody else want to take, take it, they can take it as well. 
No, you I can probably. Yeah, I mean, you, you can, but to be honest though, um, you can you can double like if you're good with quick adjusting, you can double Mabel out of any defense. Like, yeah. like man, 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 man to man. But like, yeah. if you're not if you if you're not cover yeah. cover two is cover two is the fastest. So yeah. what you gotta do is like shade down and then put your two linebackers in. Yeah. And curl flat. Yeah, and I I don't mean to cut you off, but if you guys just saw that right there, I also recommend. Uh, double may playing with your outside cornerback like you want your outside cornerback in a flat to guard like the corner outs because if you have your flat zone from the slot then a lot of times he's not going to get out there whereas since your outside cornerback in the flat he's on the outside already he'll be able to meet the corner out you know to the spot so as you saw there uh, d live had his uh his, his flat zone from the slot even though he had him zone drop the 20 he still gave up the corner uh because he was positioned too far inside so when you're double may playing Again, biggest key is having your outside cornerback in the flat. Yeah, yeah. My, my nickel corner or um, my slot corner. What I if I double man, but I usually man. I usually man. Yeah. Yeah. So right now, D live. Also, I would start when you anytime he runs trips. I would double. I would double maple the trip side, because uh, in oh. this in this dagger play, it looks like he's gonna. This is really popular play, so you utilize the drag underneath. So I would just have like the flat. The thirty flat and then the five, the five purple on that side to stop the time and drag, yeah. That's what just I got like over that. there, yeah. yeah. And also oh, to stop this, Henry. and also to stop this run, you can shift the D line opposite the running back, and then yeah, he's quick hiking yeah. me. Yeah, you're good, you're good. Or you can pinch your D line for now as well. Oh, oh, over here. And then shoot the gap. Yeah. Oh. I mean, oh. That one hurt, but still to give up that was fine because it's only two yards. So mm -hmm. if you're giving up two yards on a run, they're probably not going to stick with it. Yeah. And again, watch out for that tight end drag here. Might want to have like a five yard purple. Right. Yeah, that's perfect defense. I love man. Like I love what you did there, man, with the five yard purples down the red zone, because it's it's pretty difficult to beat. Man coverage already, you need like those sharp cutting crossing routes. But again, obviously, you can't run a crossing route in the red zone. Uh, it's just going right. to run too far. Uh, yeah, so you want to have... So man coverage with five yard purples is really effective down the red zone. Because there's not many sharp cutting routes that are going to get open within the 10. All good, all good. Uh, so who do, you, who do you recommend to put in the purples like when you're in man coverage? Um, yeah. Would it, be the, would it be the slot corner or the outside corner? Either an outside linebacker or one of your safeties. I got you. So I go from 335 to 335 wide. So if you look on the side, uh, John Lynch and then the other side, Sterwin James, those are safeties. So I don't, I literally run the whole game with no linebackers on the field. Okay. Yeah. And even in regs, like if you want to put like a uh, sub in a safety, I go to three three five, and then I audible down to wide, and then those become basically my DNs. Right. I mean, yeah. I mean, everybody, everybody difference is keeping different difference because this, this, this some people who prefer um, back, they just put lurker on them and it's, and give I, for some reason, and for some reason sometimes linebackers do play better against the run in safeties. But I, but yeah. I, but I'm going three, three, five wide also. So I understand what you're saying. Definitely. So what's your thought process here uh, approaching this first drive? What are you looking to do? So usually when my first drive, I like to mix it up and run a couple of different uh, formations that I like. Mm -hmm. And then trips is kind of like my go-to. If I'm like right now, I'm behind the sticks and I kind of need to get to a position where I feel a little bit better and down in distance for third down mm -hmm. or picking up a first down. So I'll usually like to come out to something like a uh, pistol and then I'll sub, sub the fullback, in, a tight end in at fullback. And then that way I can go to a slot too because I like the inside zone play yeah. from a slot on first downs a lot. Yeah. Also another thing I'll tell people is is you want to make sure to take advantage of people that aren't utilizing zone drops on defense. So a lot of times uh, people, again, will just have their zones on default. So you can just hit them with crossers to either side of the field. Um, 
Oh, let's kind of see here what he's doing on defense. Right there, A. Yeah. Yeah, so what is he doing on defense right now? What were their post snap reads? So post snap, I'm looking high to low. His high guys were going, and it looked like he was uh, taking his curl flats and actually playing the flats with him and then trying to use him in the middle. It didn't look. It looked like crossers could be open with it, with what he was doing. Like almost like his uh, curl flats were not zone dropped, mm -hmm. so they were like at like the the first down marker essentially. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the thought press you gotta be going through. So always be trying to identify what the zone depths are. Cause say like like you said, if they're at 15 or 20, then you can hit them with that you know crosser over the top. So again, on those first drives, I love to hit them with you know crossers to either side. Because, again, they're not going to have their zone drops at the 30. So right here I'm looking at the slot where Cup is. If that guy goes with Y, X is going to be wide open. If he goes with X or deepens, then Y is going to be there for the check down. Gotcha. So he's there. All right, he played pretty good defense. He's dropping 10, basically. So Ooh. I didn't want to do all that. Ooh. Tried to throw it to B. That was close. You know, D-Lad, that was a good call, though, like, uh, on the one with Patterson. I was thinking the whole side, too. Like, you see the slot side corner, the slot corner, like, away from the ball. You just run. You ran. It was a good call. You called call, call down to a run play inside zone for yeah. seven yards for Patterson. That was a good call, bro. So right here inside, like, the three-yard line, I like double in sale, especially since he seems to be spamming Mike Blitz three. And this uh, corner, it's auto automatic audible into an out, mm -hmm. and sometimes it just busts wide open. Yeah. Yeah. So that's one of the. Oh, we got bumped a lot, but that was a great but play. You know, it's not like if you if you hitch why that um, that that would give him more room to get open. And then I just saw that he was in front of him with no ability really on Taylor Mays, so I lowballed that because yeah. if you lowball that, unless they have acro, nine out of ten times, ninety nine out of a hundred times, it's not going to be an interception. It'll be an incomplete. Yeah, and also another thing is. So you, you brought up that corner out. Uh, so you can use that concept in other formations as well. Yeah. Uh, so I know I was saying that the crossing routes are too uh, deep for the red zone, but if you're inside the five, uh, if you have a certain crossing route, again, uh, uh, some of them are different. Some of them won't run across the back of the end zone. But when you're inside that five, you want to look for routes that run across the back of the end zone uh, because you know at some point the deep blue is not going to be able to guard them uh, if they're running across. Uh, so you want to look for those crossing routes or the corner routes like uh, D-Live had in his trips there uh, that can just right across the back of the end zone. Oh, Lord. Now, do you think I should have shifted my D-line there? Uh, it's no honestly, honestly, it's pretty tough to stop the run out 55 wide sometimes unless you're, you got to stand back with your user. Um, okay. Either that or I would go to over G if you have that. So this is what I really like about this coaching session because I really struggle against under center like power I form run yeah. or offenses. Yeah, so I'll pinch the D line, crash up, and try to hover over the center. Pinch the D line and crash up. Yeah. There should be a There we go. Yeah, so when you have the yeah, so if you're having trouble stopping the run in a three down line set, uh, those four down line sets like over G, they do a better job of filling the gaps, and you can even shoot the gap a lot of times with that, with your safety at linebacker. Again, what has he been calling a lot so far from bunch? Uh, flood and then and then the the, uh, the in route, the dig dagger. Yeah, so that's now the third time that he's called this play where he's trying to run a flood concept to the bunch side, meaning a corner route, a flat, and a streak. Uh, so I would set your zone drops, your zone drop flats to, to 20 um, to stop that little corner route, and then have a purple on that side as well. Again, this is this going to be dagger. He's going to have the tight end drag coming from right to left. Okay, never mind. So anytime he's in trips, it's going to be dagger. Uh, so far when he's in bunch. Zone. Yeah. Whole bunch. Yeah, and when he's in bunch, it's going to be the flood concept. So here, I would just watch out for seams. I would maybe man up Y. Because, okay, this this works too. I like this. I like this. Okay, when they're in five wide, a lot of people will run seams here. Just quick throw a seam route. I would watch out for Y down the seam. Okay, he's not on the seam route. That's great defense. Oh, is he going to get over? Oh, wow. Uh, another thing you can do versus five wide, 
Uh, since obviously they have no one in the backfield blocking, that would be a good time to blitz as well. Yeah, I agree. So this is going to be inside zone. So I'm actually going to go to dollar here because I just like moving dollar mm -hmm. and sliding the line because I feel like the shoots are a little bit easier for me since yeah. I'm new. Yeah, definitely. And also, I wouldn't be bad here to just give them a touchdown here uh, since you are like a right. minute left. Or if you feel confident in your shoots, you can as well go for the gap shoot. Perfect. Call a timeout. He called it. Oh, my God. He called a timeout? What a nice guy. Yeah, so the reason he the reason he should not call the timeout is, you know, that would have took off an extra 30 seconds. Uh, so there was no reason for him to call a timeout there, and 25 seconds is enough time for him. Some the oh, that's gonna be a fumble. I would call a timeout here though. Make sure you can get the ball back. Okay, he snapped it early. Timeout. Okay. Yeah, so big decision right here. Yeah, so if he doesn't come out if he doesn't come out in the trips, I'm going back to nickel. I'm gonna play man with the five yard purples. Yeah, I like that. And just watch out for that that backside deep end because last time he was in the red zone, uh, he ran that. Oh, he's in goal line. So yeah, goal line versus goal line is fine. I would just maybe I would maybe even lurk on the outside corner uh, for like that tight end corner route. Oh, he ran a toss. Oh, oh man. No worries, no worries. Uh, so going forward. I got it. And honestly, this is a normal back, pace. Back yeah, and honestly, this is a normal pace for a mutt game. Uh, so, again, obviously, it's pretty easy to, to move the ball. But the biggest lesson, what's the biggest things we've learned from his offense so far? What does he like to do in bunch? And what does he like to do in trips? So bunch, he likes the dig and the corners and then trips he likes the little flat to the the dig and inside zone yeah yeah so he's a he's a fairly heavy runner uh so on first downs we really got to be playing the run uh also when he's in bunch he loves the flood concept that's i mean he's called the flood concept three or four times when he's in bunch now uh so moving forward we're gonna have like our outside cornerback like set the 20 uh in a flat zone to stop that corner out and then have like a purple underneath as well so a five-yard purple and a 20-yard flat on the bunch side when he's in bunch. And again, when he's in trips, we got to set up run defense on first down. And also... So I really love yeah. I really love this play PA shot wheel because it'll tell you exactly what they're doing as far as a zone drop. Yeah. Because if he drops to number 10, then B's going to be open down the sideline. Mm -hmm. And if they all drop, Y's open, and then you have Y for the check down, and yeah. you can kind of yak it and get some... Definitely. Like that right there is the, that's the read right there. That thing, get out of bounds, out of bounds. Perfect. All right, so in this situation too, you do want to be working the sideline. I try to avoid using your timeout until the last possible second. Uh, so again, a lot of times in this situation, people will play really conservative. Uh, they'll have like 30 yard flats so they don't give up a big play. So you can work the sidelines and get out of bounds here. Oh, so he has hard flats. Wow. Okay, so this guy, this guy's playing by his own rules, get out of bounds. All right. So again, after every play, again, you gotta be t making post snap reads. So again, it looks like he's not utilizing his zone drops. He's not setting any of his flats. You know, 25, 30. You know, he's just cover three hard flats. So we can attack those deeper portions, uh, the deeper portions of the field, like those sidelines with the post, like he's been doing. Oh, perfect! What a drive! That's a perfect drive. So I was trying to put his user in distress because I've been hitting the left side and I've been seeing that his first step was always to the left side of my quarterback. So once I got inside the red zone and I knew I had that, it's just hike it, kill the PA, and then throw that dart it. Yeah, that's really smart. And like you said, you got to be attacking. That's something I think it's the route combo development course. And Madden 101, we go over this, where you got to be attacking all parts of the field. So... The left sideline, middle of the field, right sideline, because again, you can only, you can only dedicate so many resources to one part of the field. So if somebody, if you're attacking the left sideline too much, a lot of times people will start stacking resources to that side, 
meaning like they'll yeah. zone drop that side. So that's why we got to be attacking all different parts. And then I come out and prevent so that way he doesn't hit any yeah. kind of like stupid bombs. Yeah, just, if I give up three just, here, that's really just not watch the end for, of the world. Yeah, just watch for the I corner, just don't give him corner, a corner out by B or crosser. Okay, he ran the ball for whatever reason. That's all right, this guy plays me. really conservative. So our defensive game plan for the second half, on first down, 1,000%, just play for the run. Again, this guy is more of a run-heavy player. And again, when he's in bunch, we want to double maple the bunch side or a 20-yard flat, 5-yard purple the bunch side. When he's in trips, uh, again, we want to have that 5-yard purple opposite the tight end because he runs dagger a lot. And he will have the crosser as well. So we want to have the 30s uh, when he's in trips. When he's in bunch, we want to have the 20s. Again, the reason why we would have the 30s uh, versus trips is because he uses that deeper crosser. Right. And he's been looking really efficient on offense. So it's really going to come down to continue to score sevens and you know make him think a little bit on offense. Like literally with this man, if you can get one stop, you're in good shape. Most Real definitely. Shape. Most definitely. And really and truly because of the clock management, you know, it's essentially like getting a stop because now – um, he's going to be chasing me the whole second half. Yeah, definitely. So what's the biggest thing you've noticed from his defense in the first half? He doesn't bring a lot of pressure. I've got I've got all day. Um, and then, like you said, his, his zone depths and things like that are very vanilla. So we can really attack the sidelines. Yeah. And then he's trying to – what he's wanting you to do is go right at his user, which is Hendricks. So because he's six eight and got good speed and all that stuff, so they, that's really what he wants you to try to do is throw something in the middle so Hendricks can. I mean, I don't know. I think he even has Lurker on Hendricks. I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I I would be abusing these deeper portions of the field because you know, like you said, he's not utilizing. He's not putting his flat zones to 25 or 30. So all these deeper crossing routes are going to give this guy trouble. And the, the run is going to give him trouble as well. Also, another thing that what's wrong with his defense is he's not when you run three three five wide, you want to be hovering, you want to be hovering with your user or over the over the line. If you don't do that, the blitz is not going to come in. So you also know that you can send you know extra people out on a route uh, because he's not there's no really real blitz threat here since he's not hovering with his user. So yes, I like the double crossers here. Okay, so what what did we learn from that play? That was good defense by this guy. Yeah. What do you see there? It looked, it looked like he had deepened out his, or or the curl flats matched because sometimes they'll match, and yeah, it just wasn't there. Yeah, so I would go to like a shorter corner out here, like on verticals, because uh, he has his flat zone set to thirty. Uh, so if his flat zones are set to thirty, he's going to give up these uh, mini corners like you have in your tight end. I would maybe out route. Oh, you have the. I like. Okay, throw it away. So he's giving up that. I would look for that tight end corner. So what he's doing is, again, he has his flat zone set to 25 or 30 to stop the crossing routes. But those flat zones are too far back. So you want to go to a smaller corner route to get underneath those flat zones and get over the top gotcha. of the five-yard purple. So I would go to verticals here uh, with your with the tight end corner and have like an out route uh, from the running. Or something like this should work as well. I would, I would just have some type of corner or a shorter... Oh, this is like I would I like would money, money okay. play because he's gonna deep it and that's okay. all day definitely. So again, he's still but I see the end of the corner. Yeah, so I would I would start mixing in the tight end corner just to kind of frustrate him because again he does have his flat zone set to thirty, uh, so then it'll just become a chess match. So yeah, so I would out route the running back so we can have like a flood concept to the right side of the field. Yeah, and you see how you see how his flat zone is set to like 25 or 30, so that's why that shorter corner route is open. So uh, later in this game, this guy's going to have to make a decision. He's going to be in a dilemma as to you know whether he keeps them those flat zones on 30 and keeps giving up the corner route, or if he wants to start mixing them up and going with shorter flat zones and then giving up the crosser later in the game. And that's why it's so important to attack the different portions of the field. So again, we want to set him up attacking with the crossing routes. Uh, but this guy obviously is catching on to the, you like the crossing route, so 
That's why you want to mix in those shorter routes to attack the silent as well. Another one here. If he jumps, I like this. If he jumps a crosser or anything to the left, the, the streak will be right open yeah. up in the middle. I like it. I like it. I like it. Got it, baby. Great drive, great drive. So, so do, do, do you start milking clock here now? I mean, well, I mean, he's gonna. Here? Well, because we're almost in the fourth quarter. Are you saying from the, his opponent's standpoint? But no, from from Devon's standpoint. Well, like he, if, if he gets a stop, if he gets a stop here, does he stop? Does he need to start milking yeah. clock? Oh, Oh, one thousand percent. Yeah. Uh, if he gets a stop, this game is essentially over. I mean, he's been scoring at will. And, you know, you don't... If he gets a stop here, then obviously... Um, I lost my train of thought. Ooh. Uh, but, yeah, you do want you do want a clock here because you're going to go up two possessions and you're going to... Basically, the game's going to be over at that point. Right. So, I mean, in this case, in scenario, like a field goal even would be good. Yeah, definitely. Especially yeah. if you take some clock. Anything that makes it a two possession game. Yeah. Yeah, so remember the game plan here on defense. Um, you know, first first down, really watch for the run. This guy is super run heavy. If he comes out a bunch, set your flat zones to twenty or he's coming out <gasps> this. So again, he's gonna run the ball. I would come out and over G. Again, play the run, set up for the run. Come out over G. Over G, yeah. Pinch your D line. That's my run defense as yeah. well. Nickel over G. I yeah. love nickel over G. And I would have your slot corner on the strong side, on the tight end side. So flip on the next time. Oh god. Yeah. So next time you you want to have it. The run game is really just a numbers game. Uh, so depending on the strong side, if they have an extra receiver or tight end to the uh, certain side, you want to have your slot corner back over there as well. A hat on a hat. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. And I would get in the gap, like right above the center. That works as well. What I feel like he's going to try to do here is he's going to try to like milk and then go for two to try to win the game. Yeah. Uh, so what you can do in this situation too, to kind of speed up, uh, you can run commit on first down if he comes out in this uh, strong Z close. Because uh, even if you give up a big play, then, you know, you get the ball back and the game is in your hands. Or, you know, you run commit and you stop him for a second and 12. So it's really a win-win if you run commit here. Because he also hasn't shown the ability to pass the ball in this formation, or I don't believe he has passed yet in that formation. Uh, so you can either, you know, full-on play the run, maybe even run commit. And that will prevent them from clocking it. Uh, clocking out the game as well. He'll be more scared to, you know, just constantly run here and try to make it the last drive. He's better. Did you run commit there? No, I didn't run commit. I'm yeah. probably going to try it here. Yeah, I'll go with a run commit here. And bring your safety down to the left. Yeah. Yeah, last he's... second, I pulled off the run commit because oh. he was audibly more than he normally does. So I was like, yeah. uh, this might be a pass. Yeah, so you see he j he's trying to get it. He got it under that 30-second mark. Uh, so obviously, he's just trying to uh, get this game to the two-minute warning as fast as possible. So he's going to hike it at the last second. Uh, so I would run commit no matter what. Because uh, even if he throws and scores a touchdown, then the game is in your hands. So a good run commit there. That, that, yeah, All right, yard, watch out for flood. Line. It's going to be bunch, corner out, bunch, corner out uh, with a flat underneath. Oh, okay, he's coming out on this again. Honestly, I would go with a run commit again because even if he scores a touchdown here, you're going to get the ball back and you've been scoring at will. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I would just, if he's in this, just run commit. Just run commit. And the, and the thing is, like, when, when he... If you run commit, you're going to get the ball, and he has to go for two to beat you. Yeah. 
We're but, awesome. But you're only gonna give up a tie, so it's a it's a win win situation. Yeah. Oh, that was a phenomenal user as well. Like that was a phenomenal user. Hopefully, I got him out of his X Factor because yeah. I think. Yeah, and honestly, you want him to score faster. So even if the run commit gives up a big play, we're perfectly fine with that. Right, because all I need is three going back the other way. Yeah, yeah. So I'd go run more, one more run commit. Perfect, perfect. Now we we want him in this position again. He's a run heavy player. I'm expecting dagger here. Uh, so I'd put your flat zones to. Oh, okay. It's gonna be the corner out play. Uh, Say so your flats to twenty five. Uh, so make sure you double maple the bunch side here. Okay. That's going to be the corner route to the slot. And make sure it's your outside corner in the flat. Call a timeout if it's not. I would call a timeout. It's going to be the corner route. Oh, shoot. I got Yeah. I was on the wrong person. Yeah. But that doesn't hurt me because it's a minute yeah. 22. Yeah, so no downside there. Yeah. He might even go for two here. Oh, no. He's just going for the time. Yeah, so you're in a great position here. So, again, really when you get to those big positions in the game, situationally on defense, it's a lot of it is just play recall. You know, remembering what somebody called earlier in the game. A lot of people aren't going to, you know, just different play, different play, different play every time, especially at a competitive level. You know, people have, you know, their four or five plays, and they're going to come back to those plays later in the game, especially if they worked earlier in the game. So, again, you want to remember for later in the game, okay, on third and ten, he really liked to call this corner route. Or in bunch, you know, he really likes to call flood concepts. So that's why I was able to call out it's going to be the corner route play with the, the flat underneath. Again, it was just all play recall because when he's in bunch, that's really the only play he's been running. But again, we're good, though. Uh, we're fine giving up a touchdown there. Dang. Oh, let's go. Oh, got something out of nothing. So situa uh, situationally, he's probably going to have the 30-yard flat zones. Because uh, he's going to be afraid to give a, a big play. Uh, so we might be able to hit him with a tight end corner underneath. Okay. That correct next play. So yeah, I did see also post snap again. He had his flats on set far back. I would roll out right as well because he's not going to blitz. Oh, no worries, no worries. Yeah, so what he's doing now is he's actually putting his purples to 10, and he has his flats set to 30. Um, so what you get, uh, so we're going to have our running back out route underneath. So I would, I would okay. look for him underneath and just get out of bounds. I like this play as well. This is good. Right there. Yep. Perfect. Because, again, when he has those flats set to 30, obviously he's going to give up you know, those, those smaller tight end poles or those corner outs. Again, to stop the tight end pulse or this smaller corner routes, he needs his flat set to 20. And right now he has his flat set to 30, so that's a good play. And right now, what is he in on defense? What is he in right now? 3-3-5. Three, 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 um, we know he's running man coverage because his outside cornerback is lined up inside the outside receiver. But you can go ahead and run here, though. This is basically a game. Be careful and watch the ice. Oh, I've got, I, yeah. I got the... Focus kicker yeah, on, so, so you you don't even need need to come out and play. He's not even calling a timeout, so I would just call a timeout at three yep. seconds. Perfect, perfect. I'll be honest, this quick coaching session has been really informal. I'm glad it's helped. I love it. That was a phenomenal game. So, let's talk about the game a little bit. Again, obviously, you know, great offensive performance. Uh, what are some things you would have liked to have done differently in this game? Maybe get a stop because I knew I kind of, like, was picking up on his tendencies and things like that. 
Um, I think there were some areas where I could have maybe made some adjustments and stuff like that a little bit quicker. But I was trying to be a little bit slower and show my play art for everybody so that way we could explain exactly what was going on. Yeah, definitely. So I missed definitely. some adjustments there. Um, and then I would have liked to have had some better user on some of the outside runs because I think I got caught inside the, the minutiae and he just kind of bounced outside. So kind of scraping to the outside on my on my user would have been a little bit better, I think, in my opinion. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And another thing to note, too, when you're running that over G, and I can, I believe I, I don't know if I had this in the premium tips, uh, but I can add it, but uh, to shoot the runs out of the over G, you can be lined up right over the center. Like, you want to pinch your defensive line and slant them up, and you want to take your user, you want to be standing in between both your defensive tackles, and a lot of times you can just shoot straight in. Okay. Yeah. That's what I like about the dollar formation is if I slide the line to the left and like if I'm playing a, a bunch player or a trips player or something like that, then that guard pulls for base. I just replace the guard and then I, I try to use her that and tackle as quickly as I can. Yeah, most definitely. And I think another big thing to know in that game was, you know, just understanding, you know, the post snap reads and seeing that when he has his flat set to 30, you know, going to the shorter, you know, tight end pulse or corner routes, or when you didn't have his flat set to 30, making sure you're utilizing the deep crossing routes. So that was a big part of the chess match in that game as well. Yeah, and then he, ha he relied heavily on his user. So, like, on that last play that kind of got me in a field goal range, I kind of not rolled, but I moved my quarterback towards the slant to get him to think, okay, he's going to go to the slant. And then I threw the post behind him for, you know, a big game. Yeah, I like that. And that's a high-level tactic because, you know, I know for me personally and a lot of people, anytime you're rolling to a certain part of the field, it's natural to move with the user with the quarterback. Like when you see your quarterback, when you see the quarterback going right, you almost feel like you have to move with them and then you'll forget about right. the other side of the field. Especially this Madden with how OP escape artist is. So when you see a quarterback move, usually the user is going to move that way regardless, even if it's not, you know, an actual scramble, even if they start seeing you kind of like float that way or just drift that way. Um, the user sends us float and drift that way as well. Yeah, most definitely. Um, but no, that was, that was a great session. Oh, uh, do you guys have any, any questions? Anybody? No, I don't know. Gotcha. Okay. Is there a way we can look, uh, go back and watch this again? Yeah, definitely. I have this. I I am recording this, so I can upload this. Okay. Yeah. And I, I would like I would like to watch uh, last week's as well. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I can get that uploaded. Okay. Uh, now, I don't have a question. This is more of a this is more of an observation. Really, it's like okay. When you in three three five three 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 five wide, it's like always like touched up touch the D line because um somebody's gonna scream instantly unless they block any on tight end. It's like it's like it's like a loop and bliss that's like damn it hard to stop. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. And and I like to th I tend to like mix that up because then like we said when we first started, like Manu said and touched on, you know if you can come out and run different um what is the word I'm looking for, different setups and make it look like the same play every time, but one time you're bringing heat, one time you're dropping in coverage, then it just kind of like helps with that. And 3-3-5 three, three, to 3-3-5 three, three, wide, at least for me from a user standpoint and a very like beginner level, it's easier to get to 3-3-5 three, three, wide and get them set up for um, like bringing heat and get them set up for, you know, uh, being able to kind of drop in coverage, especially if someone like he was doing to me, he was running a little bit of hurry up when he'd get into the red zone. So I would go from like the double Mabel to the man coverage with, you know, if I'm inside, if I'm at the 15, if he's like at the 20 to the 15, then I'm going to play um, hard flats that are, that are at 20. And then if he's inside like the 10 to the five, I'm going to use those purples that are set at five. Yeah, most definitely. No, uh, no, the red zone defense definitely as well was uh, spot on. You know, I, I did like the decision going the man down there because, again, it is, it's fairly difficult to beat man outside of the 20, uh, but inside the 20 it's even harder because, again, there's 
you're already super condensed on, you know, the field and the amount of routes that you can run, you know, down the red zone. So, um, like, again, down the red zone, you don't have to worry about the skinny poles, which beat man. Uh, a lot of times you don't have to worry about the, the crossers as long as, unless they're inside the five. So, yeah, that was yeah, great to things, see. Whenever you're playing man inside the red zone, the things that you got to really worry about is, like, the um, – the whip route or the zig route they yep. are, and and in routes so i run a variation of that uh trips play that you know if the outside guy's got a post the middle guy's got the flat and then the inside guy's got the slant and then the post comes behind it a lot of times when i'm at like the 10 or the 8 yard line and someone's playing man i put that inside slot on that slant and then the tight end is on an in route a smart and in route so that really gets open a lot on man too Definitely. Um, and Mark, I know that uh, you had had a question earlier, right? I know you had just unmuted. Mark, you here? He going again. It's like who gave me? Did anyone else have any uh, questions or observations that they want to make? Oh, he's bad. No, he muted himself, so. All right, so let's move on to, do we have anyone in here? So, Agent, I know you weren't able to send in uh, the, Agent, next week we can do your film, or if you have, like, any, like, anything uploaded online right now, we can go over that now together, or you can do that next week. Yeah, I actually um, just figured out how to upload it from my, like, PlayStation clips, so I just uploaded it to my YouTube, I was going to go on my YouTube channel and, like, copy the link and drop it in the chat. Okay, yeah, if you can do that real quick. Hopefully that works. Yeah, yeah, that definitely works. Uh, so we can go over your you know, first couple of drives and, you know, have everybody in here offer their input. Right, yeah, let me see if I can get to my YouTube real quick. See who I don't know if this is for the master's program or not, so if it is, I'm sorry. But is there a way that I could, like, do a live thing uh, maybe in a couple of weeks? Uh, right now, yeah, so this is just for the master's program right now. And, okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. No, you're good. You're good. Mm. Uh, so, did you guys find this session helpful? Yeah, I found it real helpful. Um, it was nice to kind of like have someone you know, coach me through the areas that I was a little bit hesitant on and then also, you know, kind of reinforce some of my decision making. Because a lot of times I, I think to myself like, okay, would Manu have done that? Like would would am I making the right call here? Am I looking at it and reading it the right way? So kinda of understanding that I am kind of making the right read understanding is very helpful to me. Yeah, definitely. Huh? definitely. I have a question I don't know I wasn't watching the whole game. Um, I found it as well. Um, how 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 often how often do you switch up when, in terms of your your zone drops? Because like the, in terms of what I saw, my my visual, I, I didn't see like you mess with your zone drops a lot. So that's all dependent on the opponent. I have games where you know I I'm changing my.